Well, I think it's safe to say that 2020 has been a year to forget. Travel is at a standstill. Few industries have fallen as far as fast. And when it does recover, things will look a lot different. The public is nervous, very nervous, about getting back out there. Flying has been reduced by 80% all around the world. Delta is losing $60 million a day. Passenger numbers won't return to pre-pandemic levels until 2023. New Zealand will not have open borders with the rest of the world for a long time to come. It's safe to say travelers and the travel industry have never seen anything like this. So in today's video, I want to talk about what the future of travel looks like for all of us moving into 2021 and well into the future. What a day to be alive. There's so many questions regarding travel at the minute, which will only be answered in time, but I'm really interested to hear what you guys have to think. So uh, drop it down in the comments. What do you think 2021 and the future of travel will look like? Now for me personally, travel will feel and be very different than what it was in the past. However, of course, I do believe that we will get back to a stage where the world can travel freely. There's no doubt that travel and tourism has been one of the worst affected this year, but travel is and still will be in huge demand. It's just going to take a bit of time for things to start running normally. Of course, we have great news with the vaccine coming, a bit of light at the end of the tunnel potentially. However, this is going to take quite a long time to be implemented throughout the world and for people to feel comfortable and confident moving around again. From this year onwards, the way that we travel has for sure completely changed. And what I mean by this is airport security will take even longer with people being scanned for temperatures. Masks will most likely be sticking around for good for a few years, as many news outlets have said that masks will become mandatory even well into the future. Sanitizing stations will continue to be available for people to use to keep on top of their hygiene. So the whole process of going to the airport and flying will have completely changed and it's something unfortunately we're going to have to get used to. Now travel is definitely something that will never ever fade away because people are already craving to go abroad and get some sun or go and enjoy a nice holiday. If you think about it, almost the entire world has been in lockdown for almost a year. So people are definitely craving to get outside and get away. However, with that, I do think that people will be sticking a little bit closer to home and potentially not traveling as internationally or as far away from home as they used to. Many people have mentioned it already, but I think domestic travel is going to go on the rise because of course people are going to want to stay a little bit closer to home where they're less at risk and they can feel a bit more confident so doing holidays in your own countries or close neighboring countries things like road trips and backpacking enjoying nature parks i think will become the new norm but i am interested to hear your thoughts are you guys gagging to get away on holiday whether that's a backpacking trip a road trip a cruise or internationally abroad or will you guys stay more local until this virus has completely dissipated and things really do calm down with this whole pandemic going from bad news to a bit of good news with the vaccine now bad news again with apparently a variant of the virus there are constant updates going on on which countries are actually open to travel to right now because believe it or not there actually are some countries that are open for you to travel to some countries you're still having to quarantine in for two weeks or self-isolate other countries you still have to provide a 72 hour negative test i believe but uh, the best way to keep up to date with all that information is your government foreign travel website so make sure you check that out because it gives you all the information and is updated regularly so that you know which countries you can and can't travel to and which requirements that you need to follow I personally believe that it's going to take some time for a lot of specific countries to welcome international travelers and foreigners into their country. I think some countries will definitely be bringing in specific requirements such as you need to have a certificate of your COVID-19 vaccine and other things along those lines. So you can definitely expect a few more restrictions and requirements before you enter a country. With all the negative processes and the new ways of doing things which I've just talked about, I do think there will be some benefits. Many, many travel companies and the entire travel industry has been hugely affected by what's happened this year, which means they need to build their businesses back up and get return clients going away on holiday again. So a lot of travel businesses will be giving discounts and good rates to try and get people to swarm back to travel. However, the only thing there might not be discounts on will be flights, 
which I believe will most likely go up in price because of what's happened this year and uh, the airline industries have definitely been massively affected. I think there definitely could be a few surprises in store this year with which countries are some of the most traveled to. When we think of popular travel destinations around the world, you might think of India, France, the UK, Spain, South America, loads of different countries around the world. However, I think some of the most popular this year will now be the countries which have the least amount of coronavirus cases and that have least been affected by the virus which means there might be a few countries in there which surprises this year and end up being a top travel destination. So I thought I would finish this video with some good news and list off a few countries to you guys that are actually open to travel to right now. Egypt is apparently open, commercial flights have restarted, however, travelers must present a negative PCR test. So uh, Egypt could be a good place to go to, which has always been a top travel destination for a lot of people. Morocco is also another hotspot in Africa, very close to Europe. I've been there myself, a lovely country. South Africa, believe it or not, is also open. Apparently they've opened the three international airports for inbound and outbound tourism. And I've also got a friend there right now and she says it is completely open and free. So uh, that might be a good spot to go to. However, once again, you do need to provide that 72 hour negative COVID test. So make sure with all of these countries that you look into them in depth and you get the right information so that you can go to that country. Mexico, Mexico. I've seen from YouTube actually, a lot of online content creators have headed to Mexico because that is a country that is fully open at the moment. Pakistan, the country that I want to go to next. However, they do require a 14 day isolation period. So sadly, I don't think I'm gonna be going there anytime soon until they get rid of that because I don't fancy being stuck in a hotel for two weeks. Now, some of the countries in Europe that are open aren't a lot because of this new variant. Me being from the UK, I'm now not allowed to go to quite a few countries in Europe because of uh, what's just happened in the last week. However, Albania, is open. Travelers do not require pre-departure testing or quarantine on arrival, so Albania might be a good spot. Sweden is another one who have really tackled this virus very well. I don't even think they went into a major lockdown or anything. I won't list off any more, but I will leave a link to the website where I've just read this information from. So if you do want to visit any specific country, then click on the link in the description, go onto this website and you'll be able to see which countries are open and which aren't. And it also lists the requirements that you need to go into that country, whether it's a quarantine or a 72 hour negative test before you go. Anyway, guys, I'm going to finish the video here. I hope you enjoyed it. It was more of a kind of my thoughts of what the future of travel looks like and also me wanting to hear what you guys think the future will look like so make sure to put it in the comments below if you're planning any trips any holidays anything to get abroad let me know in the comments and we'll get a discussion going thank you guys so much for watching and as always i'll catch you in the next video